Okay, welcome back to HP Discover. We are live in Las Vegas. Day three of three days of live coverage. Go to siliconangle.com and wikibond.org. But go, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. You'll see all the videos. We go live and we go all right up to YouTube. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. It's our fourth season uh, with theCUBE and our fourth HP Discover. Uh, it's been a great run and we're here, happy to share that data with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, wikibond.org. Stephen DeWitt is here. He's the CMO of the Enterprise Group at HP. Stephen, welcome back to theCUBE. Awesome to be here. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome to be here, you know, and uh, another good event. Congratulations. Uh, I tell you what, uh, it's been a great journey uh, through Discover this year, without question. Uh, the best, clear representation of Hewlett Packard's strategy, the areas that we're focusing on from an innovation perspective, and perhaps the best aspect of this Discover relative to previous Discovers, if you took every HP -er out of this floor right now and just left the customers that were here, you could hear the entire HP strategy told through the voice of the customer. Well, that's always a great measurement, is, is, is how well the, uh, the messaging gets through to the customer. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying the customers can, can convey that, that's a huge win, right? Big. Yeah, so, um, all right, so what's, uh, what are the highlights for you of this event? I think a couple of big ones. Uh, first, uh, just down the hallway here is our innovation theater. Uh, we launched this initially at, uh, at Frankfurt uh, as a way to augment our main plenary sessions. Uh, at this particular uh, Discover, uh, we made it into a customer innovation showcase. Uh, and we had NASCAR, uh, Nationwide Insurance, McKesson, uh, Fox, uh, so many other innovative, pioneering, cool companies that are working on really big transformation. I mean, the stuff that Nationwide is doing is amazing. The stuff that NASCAR is doing, I think the NASCAR story has blown people away. Most people think NASCAR is a bunch of cars turning left on a track. And most people don't think of NASCAR as really one of the uh, uh, huge, uh, I don't want to say investors because they haven't spent a lot of money, but one of the huge advocates of the power of big data. Yeah, it's definitely. transforming their sport. It transforms that NASCAR app that you use. It transforms their sponsor community and they were able to go from nothing to that capability in about a year and a half. Very data-driven, the NASCAR story. Unbelievable. Yeah. Great vibe at the uh, show here. A couple, a couple other things that I think were really good. A, we had great attendance. At a, at a period of time when a lot of shows have down attendance, I, I think the fact that we had such great support from the customer community indicated a few things to us. One, customers are, are, are hungry to hear more about big data security, mobility, and cloud. These are the core solution areas that are shaping the new style of IT. I think customers recognize that we play from the consumer, to the device, to the connectivity, to the infrastructure, to the IT operations, to the application framework. These are all of the realities that end customers have to deal with. And when you look across the technology landscape, I think people recognize the fact that HP's got material technology across that continuum, and that gives customers an enormous leg up in solving their problems. We, we were commenting on Meg's keynote about her messaging, and uh, for the folks who follow HP like us, we know that you know when she first started, she got slammed by the NPR, and, and when she couldn't, you know, repeat the mission statement for HP at that time, you know, HP's a big company. You're in the marketing, so you know the challenges. It's like five different mission statements, everyone's got to vote. It's kind of convoluted, so it's always hard to say. I remember, she, I remember saying to myself, that's unfair, it's a cheap shot by the yep. press. So I like her dig on her messaging, but her messaging was very short. It was one line, she was, that's it. It was one thing, that's a new style of IT. Okay, so nice messaging. So, so what does that mean? Just take us through that, because that is a great bumper sticker. Yep. <laughs> and, I, and you know, I think the new style of IT, I mean, we've all seen some metaphors that I think are, are real life examples that sort of represent the first waves of the new style of IT. Hey, go back uh, 13, 14 years ago, 1999, Google generated no revenue. Now it's one of the most valued companies on the face of the earth. And there's an enormous amount of technology and algorithms and this, that, and the other thing underneath the covers of Google, but what fundamentally did Google do? It took human language and unlimited data. Created and, user experience. And married them together. The, the new style of IT, 
as you look into infrastructure, data centers, core operations for big companies, is going to reflect a lot of that same paradigm. The human experience, human language, human query, gestural, being able to manipulate infrastructure. Where the application is king, the characteristics of the application are defined, and the infrastructure delivers. And the friction and the, the, the drag that exists between all of the pieces, parts that have to deliver against those goals is literally faded to black. Uh, and in order for that to happen, beautiful vision. You know, you don't hear Captain Kirk calling back to Scotty and having Scotty going, hey, I got to update the firmware on the servers before yeah. we attack the Klingons. That's not in the SLA. Uh, you know, <laughs> gee whiz, Captain, uh, you know, we got to, you know, it's only, I mean, come on. Yeah. The future of technology is driven by the human experience uh, and the friction goes away. That yeah. is the new style of IT. And that journey from where we are to that promised land is about application transformation. It's about infrastructure converging. It's about uh, orchestration driven by the app. And these are all new frontiers. Yeah, we heard, we heard a lot of that theme consistently here on theCUBE was uh, ease of use, experiences, customer experiences, that IT, you know all the buzzwords we know, IT as a service, orchestration, DevOps, cloud, fabric, but at the end of the day, what we've heard is business styles changing. And that business style's about the experience for the customer where the business issues are more compelling. I mean, you, you've been an entrepreneur, you remember the days with speeds and feeds in the boxes, now it's like, okay, I got a fabric, I got a cloud, and here's a service, here's an experience a revenue experience for the business and a client experience. So, so Bingo. with that, what is that new style? From your experience in talking to the customers here, uh, because the demand is for the cloud, it's yep. for convergence, that's yep. clear in all the data. What are you hearing from those customers about the new enterprise? What, well, what are some I think direct things? there's a couple of things. I, I, I think it really boils down to kind of co coalescing around a future state vision. Uh, you know, we had the, uh, the CIO from the Commonwealth Bank of, uh, uh, Australia uh, presenting uh, at our CIO summit uh, earlier in Discover, and you know, it, it, a perfect metaphor. Seven years ago, they were the lowest rated uh, bank in their geography in terms of customer service. They, they were the bottom of the barrel. And their IT operation was all about how do I maximize the fees I'm going to charge you? <laughs> and, you know, how do I how do I make sure from a transaction perspective I know what's going Great on? Customer experience. Oh, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And it took a courageous CEO with vision about the new style of what they want their brand to represent in a post-Angry Birds world, in a Gen Y, all the things that we know are coming. And so so they also, from an IT perspective, had spent, and I'm going to pull a little Jeffrey Moore here, they had spent most of their dollars and cents on systems of record. Big apps that run the core of the bank and how can they squeeze more and consolidate more and charge you those fees. And it took a cultural shift for them to think of systems of engagement. How do I earn your trust, your like? And if at the end of the day, over a hand, over your lifetime, you need to buy X amount of financial pro uh, uh, products to get through your life, I'm not going to be able to succeed in all of those because that's my business unless I have that relationship with you. Uh, and I, that's a perfect vignette for the new style of IT. And I think what people are most focused on in the summer of 2013 is the application transformation, the, the intense focus on mobility. You know, your brand is now at stake in the mobile world. Uh, your credibility is at stake in the mobile world, and yet most of your capabilities are tied to the historical world of systems of record. And that migration has to happen now, and companies are struggling with that. But there's recognition, you're saying there's recognition that that transformation is evident from the customers. Across the board, from the biggest corporation to... So they've crossed the chasm, so to speak. I, so I, we're definitely so across the chasm now. We're, we're, we are in a full-blown foot race to the new world, and, and the exciting thing, and I think for a company with the, with the intense systems capability and background that we have, you know, what also is happening is the complete revolution of what infrastructure looks like and ultimately how it's delivered. Yeah. Cloud and new components. So you think we'll see a renaissance in, in IT investment um, as a result of that awareness? Uh, 
yes, and I, and actually, I think you just picked the perfect word because I, I wouldn't say it's a, I, I wouldn't refer to it as an evolution or a whatever. This is truly a renaissance. This is a redefinition of the IT landscape. It will be a redefinition of the competitive landscape. You know, if you think about the traditional providers of IT, you know, as, as this new uh, wave washes over us, as well as the new componentry, there may be some new brands that have a position in the market that people don't associate them with today. Um, you know, uh, I, I think this is uh, as extraordinary a moment of time in our industry as we've seen. So what does a brand need to thrive, and, and not just survive, but to thrive in this new style of IT? Well, I, I, again, I have credit to my good friend Jeffrey Moore. I, I think it really, and maybe this is overly generalized, but it starts with a view of the customer in, not the technology out. And I think, you know, when you look at banks, a lot of their capabilities were built on the investment in technology that they had and the arms race of, I've got a little bit faster this, or I got a little bit better that. And, and really that ran out of gas a number of years ago. Uh, you know, customers are always going to look for IT solutions that are bulletproof, solid, delivered by credible brands. But it is that user experience. It is that, um, it, it is that engagement. It is that elimination of friction that really is separating the weak from the strong. And, and I know we deal with the most sophisticated customers on the planet, and we also deal with the customers that are moving a million miles an hour in the new world order. I mean, you know, I think of the startups that I've built uh, and, and raising uh, early venture capital, and a lot of that money was to go buy infrastructure. Yeah. Sun that, server, Cisco boxes. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and, granted we, and yeah. granted we bought a lot of our Sun servers off of eBay, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, the, uh, but the fact still of the, the, the fact Database, the, and if you had any money left over, you might hire some people. You might hire some people. <laughs> you know, the reality is today, and I talk to entrepreneurs all the time, you know, they kind of laugh at that old world, and I remind them that old world was about 12 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, Amazon has shown the developer world that you can be agile, but making that enterprise great has always been a challenge, and, you know, and that is really where we see the race. I mean, yeah. certainly Amazon is racing very, very fast to try to get a position in the enterprise. And you know, they're just a different stack right now. They're focused more on the public commodity cloud where there's a value proposition mm -hmm. for the enterprise, and you know that game. So, oh, yeah. so I, what, I was, what are customers saying here in that value infrastructure that, that's needed? Obviously, Compliance, security, ANSI compatibility with Red Hat, and a lot of, I mean, this, these are kind of things open, that kind of open. Open, so. open, open, don't lock me in, don't put me into ex, you know, expensive locked in appliances with big licensing overhead on top of them. Um, you know, there, there's a lot there. I, you know, the, the, the beautiful thing about the emergence of the cloud is there is such broad industry adoption and so many R&D dollars flowing into this that the next decade is going to be awesome. Now, there's material differences between the approaches that are out there. I can tell you this about HP's approach. We will do what we've done in the past. We'll keep it open, we'll keep it extensible, we will focus on innovation across the cloud landscape. Uh, and and we will take a consumer and an enterprise mixed approach. Uh, now that may sound like everything under the, uh, you know, everything under the umbrella, and to a degree it is, but the simple reality of cloud is, you know, I don't have my smartphone on me right now, which is a rare uh, rarity, if you will, but at the end of the day, that device, even though it's made by a fruit company, that device uh, is going to be able to literally mount unlimited compute power. Uh, your tablet's going to be able to mount it. Your, the screens inside of your house are going to be able to, to uh, mount power. Just as you turn on your faucet. Internet and, of Things? And, and, yeah. You know, and, and while a lot of people have coined that, the simple reality is everything's going to be connected and everything's going to be unconstrained and the economics are going to be based on usage. So I got to I got to ask you the question. This this is because you always have a good view. You got you're like a helicopter. You can go high level or, or go go into the weeds and go deep. So so honestly, we've said in the cube last year when we were talking, we're in a modern era now, new business style, new IT style. For the first time in the history of business, you can actually measure everything. 
I mean, cool. every single aspect of a business or an enterprise now could literally be measured. The water, yeah. Yeah. The hiring, everything. firing, manufacturing, supply chain, everything. The transparency, the access to data. Sentiment. So all that you agree with, we all agree that's yep. happening. And that is so mind blowing. It yep. changes the value chain that, that disrupts and creates an innovation opportunity. So that's kind of the intro to the question. What is the most amazing thing that you've seen this past year? Yeah. It's within HP or outside HP that you just say that is the most amazing thing that's happening right now uh, relative to big data, cloud, infrastructure. You know, I'm, I'm going to be a little uh, off the beaten path. First off, I will say, <laughs> it's okay. I, I know that's a shock. Uh, <laughs> first off, the big, no wrong answer. The, the big data stuff is unbelievable. Um, and, you know, I've spent a lot of my career dealing with big data related problems. So, you know, the startups I've built have been around data uh, implications and harnessing data. If you're a bank on Wall Street, looking at every single transaction, which of course you don't know how many transactions you're going to have, and you want to run risk analytics in real time, which is an extraordinary technology hill to climb, uh, the, the implications for your institution are biblical. So and big data to me, you know, the NASCAR uh, story that uh, we've shared with the world here, um, you know, I'm, I've been intimately involved with that from the get-go. Um, uh, those kind of things excite the heck out of me because it's transforming well, the part of the American vignette. But I, I will say, I know this is kind of hokey. Um, uh, I love what we're doing in the world of augmented reality. Uh, you know, go, going back to that uh, Star Trekian uh, whoop de doo I talked about before, uh, and I hope we all live healthy enough to be able to see this in the years ahead, but we are really on the frontier uh, of being able to operate in multi-dimensions on any device, screen technology within the next handful of years, on certainly on little devices, mid-sized devices, and eventually on that big Hulkin 65 inch you got on your TV. Uh, not only are you going to be able to do 3D, you're going to be able to come fully off the screen and you're going to be able to interact. Uh, we've been pioneering technology around that. Certainly everyone knows Erasma, which is something that has been featured all over here. It'll be featured in our uh, enterprise campaign that's coming up. <laughs> Uh, which is another cool part of the show here because we're featuring the enterprise campaign, which we've never done before. Uh, but those sort of things, whenever you get into the marry of the human experience and technology, I get fired up. I mean, the augmented reality, first of all, we love it. I was showing this because this is my son graduated from Palo Alto High School with Google Glass on. Nice! So, I mean, that is like a, you know, you don't see that every off. Very I love often. it. I so love I it. gave him my developer kit because he's, serious he's, he's right a total there, geek. I, I love know. it. No, I mean, he's, I loved it too. I was kind of proud of him. My boy's a geek too. Um, but augmented reality speaks to a future where, we're literally, that is real time. Mm -hmm. You're talking about changing someone's life. So big data is creating these new opportunities. You just mentioned the financial thing. This is yep. like, so, the new future is going to be invented right in front of our eyes. What does that enterprise need to do, in your opinion? Not necessarily, you know, by cloud here, but like just from a mindset standpoint. What's the mindset of a CIO, CFO, general manager, line of business executive? Well, you know, I think there's a few things, and, and let me start with the line of business executive. You know, just take, you know, take my role, marketing. You know, if you think of marketing, you know, I remember when I was going through my freshman year marketing 101 class and being taught the four Ps. <laughs> And that mystical reality of, or the potential of one-to-one -one marketing, where I actually yeah, yeah. could know you and be able to bring stuff to you. I mean, that's extraordinary. But it also requires businesses to know what to do with data. It's, you know, we can build great algorithms and great presentation to make a data fill a pretty chart and, and basically tell you the answer. But data science is an art that companies are going to have to embrace. And if you think about the analytic capabilities of most enterprises, oh, I got financial acumen, I know how to look at numbers, I know how to look at this, but the ability to look at trends and be able to mine out of that against your commerce objectives or against your operational objectives, that's a skill set that few companies have those that do buy their stock because they're the ones that are going to be able to take advantage yeah. of all of this. Yeah, the notion that big data practitioners are going to create more value than guys selling the stuff, right? So your son, when he goes to college, yeah. needs to be a data scientist because that way you can retire early because yeah. he's going to make a lot. <laughs> so what yeah. are you doing? Talk about what you're doing with data science and, and 
and what kind of investments you're making as a CMO? Well, a, a huge. Um, I, you know, we have overhauled our backend analytics uh, uh, engine. We use our own. Uh, we drink our own champagne. We're a heavy user of autonomy, uh, and in fact, perhaps one of the most powerful tools that we have built off of that analytic engine is the Point. Uh, and we launched the Point. Uh, actually, version 1.0 of it shipped at Discover this week. And this is a tool that we have built for our sales force. We have a huge sales force in 160 countries. And geez, let me see if this is a great idea. You know, when you get a, a text on your phone and you see that little one pop up in the corner, what do you do? Man, you go right there. Of course, I gotta yeah. go see that. Somebody's instant trying to get a hold of me. Yeah. It's instant gratification. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. If you happen to be a sales rep and you manage 10 accounts, um, and you probably sell to a certain level in that account. You may not have all the other people in the account, and maybe you want to sell storage technology into that account. And some guy inside of one of your accounts pulls down a piece of storage data from somewhere up on the web. Wouldn't you want to know about that? Sounds connected. Yeah. I, well. Wouldn't you want to? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Wow. We talk about this all the time. Wouldn't you want to know about that? <laughs> it's an intent. We have it's built. An it's a gesture. The, right. We have built in the point a tool that allows a rep to benefit from the entire world of their account being mined in very structured pools, and then that information being pushed to you so you never have to go do anything. You just get that alert. You push on it, I want oh, to buy. Yeah, ready on, to these, buy. Ready to buy. <laughs> on these on these three accounts, all these people are looking at this, or they're looking at this, or there's sentiment on that account saying, oh, hey, fill in the blank, uh, oil company is having all this negative sentiment blah, on this particular thing. So you know as account executive, maybe I don't go in and lead with A, B, and C. The point is, it's an point, advantage. The point of the point is that we're taking all of that data science and delivering it to you in a way that makes you action today. Remember the old adage, you know, this has been kind of a cliche, and now apparently with big data has proven it. Uh, most people say, oh, we listen to the customer. We listen to the customer. We listen to our customer. Well, now you can actually listen now to the customer. You, now, I, you, they're on Twitter, you have the data. To your point, the sales guy gets great value out of yep. understanding the gestures and sentiments we can align, yep. strategically better, be yep. better serving. And if he's not serving the customer, you're going to know about it. And so, we're not, you know, one of the problems with Hadoop in general, or one of the problems with big data lakes in general is, it, okay, it's a massive lake. Okay, got it. Um, I need a pair of shoes out of the lake. So I, I need to get to the right data based on not just the content that's coming out, but my persona. Uh, and that is another, going back to my comment on one-to-one, -one, you know, marketing for at least most of my professional career was, oh yeah, I'm gonna do a direct, a direct mail campaign to a CIO or a direct mail campaign to a CMO and we'll tailor the message to that. Yeah. Catch you at a conference. Uh, catch you yeah. at a conference, blah, blah, blah. We can now deliver in real time, everywhere, anywhere, the perfect message to the persona or to the sales or service professional that's working with a persona and deliver that all in a frictionless way. Do you see the feedback from the field, not only from a selling standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, because you can listen to the customers, you can evaluate the data, performance, are they buying? Wait, this is a sales inhibitor. Do you yep. actually have that data. How is that getting back into the products, right? So like, product manager would love to be like, because they do that kind of in the back office there. They're the ones putting the product together, doing all the feature analysis getting some external data, trying to throw the dart at the board. This is another, I mean, this is just the, the other coup de gras. I mean, if you think about it, you know, how does product management historically <laughs> happen? Uh, I get a spec based on what I think, okay? And if you remember back a handful of years ago, uh, how did I collect that data? If I'm a startup, maybe by my intuition or my experience or the experience of my engineers. If I'm a big company, all my relations that I've had and what worked and what didn't work, and my product managers evolved. I mean, that was so 90s or so 80s you're, you're or gonna, whatever. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna actually make obsolete your research partners, the external researchers. Well, you I, got don't, the data. I don't know if it's obsolete because the power of data is, and there are gonna be research firms that can take data and bring it into a, another level of understanding. But going back to product life cycle, now product life cycle isn't about a, 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 an individual or a group think, it's about global think. Uh, delivered in real time against certain filters or criteria, et cetera, this sophistication's going through the roof.
Awesome, well we totally agree with that religion and this persona of one marketing philosophy is just personalization coming back. I mean, it's like, that was kicked around 10 years ago. Um, what are you working on now, your, your job at HP? Has it changed? Last year you were heading up all the marketing, you were involved in the show, you were on Meg's transition team. Yep. Has it changed, has it added? So give us the update on, on what's going on with you. Well, I think the biggest uh, thing is that we've got our enterprise marketing uh, 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 mojo, I guess is probably the best thing. <laughs> uh, with the changes that we implemented as part of our restructuring, we brought our enterprise marketing teams together to be able to bring an experience to our customers like what you see here on the floor, like you'll see in our enterprise campaign. Um, you know, look, it's it, it's been, and I'll call it a knock, uh, on HP that, you know, when we typically come into a customer, we come in as a bunch of independent business units. The strategy that we have right now is very clear, very consistent. Unified. We, we are unifying the company. So from a marketing perspective, this provides an awesome platform for us to integrate the messages, provide clarity of our vision around big areas like cloud security, mobility, and uh, big data, to provide clear uh, vision around our uh, where we're going to spend our money, uh, where our IP high ground is going to be. Uh, these are all areas that our team has been able to uh, operationalize. I think the final piece is, and maybe this is sounds a little hokey, but I, I think everyone will appreciate it, we're doing much better work with much more compelling messages for less money. Well, you guys are drinking your own champagne, as you said, and I think one of the things that we notice is that we, we when we report it all week here in the Cube, is the fabric message on the Converge side is just not just one division anymore, although you sell a lot of point products in that yep. networking group, but it's now across, and it's, it's a fabric that's going to collect the Internet of Things. And we made a joke, fabric could be helped with the style of IT, you know, depending on which fabrics you use, but, but that's there. SAR is overseeing cloud as a holistic, which is a holistic perspective, which means someone's minding the store. Yeah. Right? So that's one observation. And then everything in the middle, you got servers kind of coming together, you got Moonshot, so a lot of great position. Yeah. So kudos to you guys for executing that and staying with that. Well, you know, I, look, I think the industry should uh, look at Moonshot very hard uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, to for those out there that possibly think that commute, or uh, excuse me, that compute has gotten commoditized, you couldn't possibly be more wrong. It, it, it's just stunning that people would even waste time talking about that. One size does not fit all in compute. Serving up a single application to billions of people requires a certain way that you scale, a certain management infrastructure, uh, heat, space, power, you name it, whatever the dynamics are. I mentioned earlier running risk analytics uh, on Wall Street. Uh, very different dynamic. Running transactional ERP systems. One size does not fit all. But that being said, you can't introduce the complexity. Uh, we have made a very clear statement to the industry that we are going to continue to drive hardcore R&D into compute networking and storage while at the same time wipe out the friction that exists between them. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when we get together in Barcelona, or next year when we're here Barcelona. in Vegas, <laughs> um, you're going to hear some stuff from HP in terms of the next year of convergence is going to blow your mind. Yeah, we talked about your cadence, your Barcelona, or your HP Discover, you know, Vegas, Europe, Cadence, and you're seeing innovations on each. Well, it's great, we, we, a lot we, of pressure we, on the product people, it obviously puts pressure on you, but, but it means innovation comes out and customers get value faster. So. Yeah, you're not looking at 18 month development curves right. anymore. That era has gone the so way of the So when is Barcelona? We, hope, we would like to be at Barcelona. You got to get us to Barcelona. It is in, okay, we're, we're <laughs> it is in He's early December, now. early December in Barcelona. We're there. Uh, there's a number of things we're going to be rolling out there, some exciting new things around our public cloud, a number of things around our integrated management. I'll leave those out there. There's a few more. I, I got I to I also give you some props because we like to highlight the, the goodness of HP. Because we've been following the HP, we've been like an embedded reporters in, inside HP, and it's kind of fun. I, and, I, and I always said, I want we're documenting the turnaround in real time. But the moonshot in particular is something to point to because a lot of the analysts are saying, why would HP do that? They're cannibalizing revenue. And, and, and what, we, what we've been saying, and you guys have been doing, is you're inventing the future. Well, why Faster. Did, why, why would why? you want to milk, milk an old market move right to the... Well, why did the Wright brothers create the plane? Uh, why, why, why did Henry Ford do what he did? Uh, why did Bill and Dave 
create the oscillator? Uh, because if not us, who? Uh, and, and really, you know, we're a big company. Everybody gets that. We're in a competitive space. We're one of the iconic brands in our country. We take that exceptionally seriously. Uh, and our goal in evolving our company is to set it up to be the leader that it is for the next generation. And that means you have to embrace that next generation. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, <laughs> revenues may go up, revenues may come down, go back up, go back down, go back up. It's the transformation of the human experience with technology that will define us all, and we're going to play a big part of that. Well, you guys have a great strategy. Obviously, you're staying, sticking to your knitting and it's showing the investments paying out. Everything's kind of popping together right now in the market with proof points, right? So real validation. You guys could have gone for that trending positioning, said, no, we're going to stick with it. Everyone was did the line. You guys did a great job, I have to say that. And the work you guys are doing in open source and open stack in particular really shows that the multi-vendor industry standard bodies now are communities. And I think that Can is a huge deal. I make one point deal. on that? We love open stack. We've been, you know, obviously we've been a, a, a huge uh, player in that. Uh, and I'm going to put the butt word out there, and I don't mean it in, uh, you know, it, it's right, but it's wrong. It's a it, transition word. It, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's right, but there's more. Maybe that's a way of putting it. And, and I think what we have learned with all of the hyperscale that we've seen in great successful companies, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Apple, many others, uh, that have gone through that explosive growth and have deployed, you know, tens of thousands of servers on a, you know, on a base like this. It's non-sustainable. It, it's just non-sustainable. I mean, you know, I, I could come up with a, you know, when the Greeks created the aqueduct system, it was because you had to do it better because you can't carry water for millions of people. Uh, the simple reality is, <laughs> as you know, as That's we go point. from you know five billion to six billion to seven people online, as we go from the internet of nothing to the internet of everything, as we go to you know exabytes of fill in the blank data, you can't keep doing what you're doing. It's just simply that simple. Uh, and that's uh, and that's why innovations like Moonshot. I mean, we've already given the characteristics of what we're. You know, we run HP.com on it, which is a, you know, a multi-billion-dollar e-commerce site, one of the largest in, it, certainly in the United States. We run it on something that's you know about as po you know less power than the lights that are looking at us right now. I mean, this is just, you know, the alternative is buy tons. Yeah. You're, well, you're increasing capability. I think the footprint issue around energy is just, it's just an amazing. So, you know, the R&D is huge. HP Labs, any comment about how you're going to be bringing more HP Labs into the product mix? Well, I'm not sure if you guys spoke with Martin, but one of the big yeah. changes in the, in the Martin era of labs is, as opposed to labs being kind of labs, uh, you know, working on stuff, cool you know, stuff, you know, pioneering there. stuff. And look, I mean, the store once came out of the labs, so many other technologies have come out of the labs. You know, we're going to be clearly one of the leaders in memristor technology and board level photonics, systems on a chip. These are all areas that will change the numerators and denominators of systems. Uh, but really what's happened, you know, I'm going to say it, you know, previous regimes sort of robbed the cupboard uh, in the world of the labs. Uh, and, and while they kept labs as, as an entity and shrunk it, what they never operationalized and what I think Meg came in and very quickly moved to operationalize is how do we take the labs into the flow of the business? So that- Applied R&D. So that applied R, that's exactly right. So that flywheel of innovation and the lever of that spend- It's a balance, though. You, you is integrated you're not into the business. You can still do the really kind of, you know, stuff out there that drives the sparks. Yep. Right, but you got to have that asset, right? The and Martin, look, Martin, you know, Martin ran our BCS uh, business. He's been involved, you know, he's one of the, you know, as you know, I, I created a big startup in the early Linux era. You know, I've known Martin for years. I think anybody in the Linux community knows him. Um, you know, he's a hardcore techie, he's a visionary, and he's also a business driver. Uh, and, and that really is the model of Well, the, the flywheel is a good metaphor because to the extent that you Scale. can apply, Right, you can see, and the, and, the, and the wheel goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And that's going to be a competitive advantage for us. I mean, if you count on your fingers and toes right now, 
And this is something I say to customers all the time. You have a choice in technology vendors. There's no question about it. And there are great technology vendors out there. We partner with killer companies, SAP, yeah. Google, Intel. There's so many great companies that we but work with. But to get with. to that Star Trek example you mentioned, Scotty, more power. Sorry, I get back to you. Got to run a PI report or an yeah. SLA. Yeah. You got to have, you got to move from the rack and stack gear in a rack and I got to download the update to Linux to a pure, agile, adaptive, kind of an AI, just stuff happening, right? Because you can't move fast enough, you got to have that aqueduct. You need to have that scale. That's what you're referring to. Was right? it the, did I say the Greeks doing the aqueducts or was it the Romans? I'm not, it was probably the Romans. I thought it was the Romans. I, yeah, well, okay, my apologies. It was the Romans, but I corrected myself. <laughs> now this, but it's a good point. Well, Stephen, great to have you on theCUBE. Always, always yes. a pleasure, dynamic colorful, knowledgeable, and you've been very busy, you've been very successful. Way to keep everything tight uh, and executing. Again, the execution's been flawless, and I think it's just a matter of time before the world starts seeing uh, more proof points in the form of financial results. Uh, but the messaging's tight, good job, and, 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 and Kevin Bacon's fantastic. Kevin did a great he job. He's a it. really, really cool guy, and I think culturally, uh, there is a, there's a great fit. I mean, that whole message was just right on the money. Sweet, so congratulations. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We're here at HP Discover for our independent analysis to bring you the data. We talked to everyone all week, C-level employees, customers, partners, geeks. We'll bring it all to you, all that signal and share that with you. This is John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our final wrap-up here at HP Discover for a short break.